pew, 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 pew. So let's talk about exporting these. Um, so you have coherence blinking all the way down. That's great. And you have smoothing pretty much at its lowest setting. So that's also yeah. great. You never want to have any of those things on because that will affect the exported data. Um, so that all looks good to me. And you're in Smart DI. So mm -hmm. you're going to have to copy and paste each of those traces into a text document. Text file. Yeah, text. Edit. Here we go. I'll take this one. Right click, copy to ASCII, format, make plain text, paste, mm -hmm. boom. And then we'll repeat the process for the subtrace. Copy, new document, format, save as sub. I should include these details, right? Minus 5 dB. No, the name of the no? file here doesn't matter that much. It, it doesn't import it for you or anything. So you could call it, you know, A and B or main and sub or whatever. Phase invaders. Right. Start mission. Upload main data. So main data, main lab for sub. Choose sub data, sub. Choose. All right. So Name. this is the point that most people want to rush through. Mm -hmm. uh, and you've probably already heard me say this, but I'm going to say it again for everyone else's benefit, um, which is that you should put as much information here as you can remember. So at least make, model, and location. Um, so if you can remember make and model of the main and the sub, and then also like, you know, the city, um, the name of the venue you're at, maybe a room. Upload and start. What I always like to try and do is see, like, can I do as little work as possible? Like, do I have, really have to do anything here? So. In the use case where you're just potentially using phase invaders to verify your work in the field, why don't you reset that delay slider? You can just double click it and it'll go back to zero. And then if you go back into smart uh, and look at all three traces at once. First, I just wanted to verify that phase invaders is doing what it's supposed to, which is taking two measurements, showing you what the summation will be. And you have now proven that it does do that because you took two single measurements, then you uh, measured the sum of those sources. And we can see that the graph in the game matches the graph in real life. And then the other thing that we can just quickly verify here is that with you making no changes, your current summation is very close to perfect. Right, so the pink line is very close to the dotted white line, and you already have a score of uh, 83. So you could now make a few changes here if you wanted to, but if you were sort of working quickly in the field, I feel like this would just be a nice, quick verification for you to see, oh, okay, uh, nothing is too far off. I can sort of move forward with my optimization steps. It's really good to have confirmation for everything that you do. <laughs> <laughs> and then you saw that if you, um, you know, were to subtract a tiny bit of delay in the main, you could, you could enjoy a little bit better summation in that area that you cared more about, right? Do you want to show mm -hmm. that again? No, I think we went this way, right? So this. I think you were going the negative direction. You ended negative up like direction. Point, yeah, right? there you go. Yeah, like point, point nineteen, 19 or, something. or something like that. Yeah. And that was that, area, that was that frequency we were, we were looking at. So in smart, we were seeing that at 70 hertz, you were not getting any summation, really. You were basically, your summed, your combined trace was at the same magnitude as each of your solo traces. Mm -hmm. So it looks like making, if you wanted to get more summation in that area, you could now, you know, look at some changes in the game here and see like, okay, can I get more summation at 70 or is like whatever is happening here going to prevent me from seeing that? Cool. Yeah. yeah, I really like this approach in terms of getting quick confirmation. 
And well, I like that you were using all of the tools at once. So you didn't just look at the score and say like, oh, okay, I get an 85 if I do what the game says, so I'll do that. But you were you were looking at, you know, all of these places and saying you're like, okay, like I don't actually care that much about this down here. I care more about this. So let me like optimize for that situation. I feel like, um, especially since we covered quite a... Um, quite a large frequency portion between the two. Um, yeah, this, two I'm sorry speakers. to interrupt you, but this was the other thing I just remembered I was going to ask you. Now that you see how wide this is, because I think this is one thing that's also hard to see in the field is the area of interaction is anything basically within 20 dB. So now that you see that these are potentially interacting all the way down to here, even though this is maybe still just noise, I don't know. But this is such a wide... Um, area of interaction now that you see this would this sort of like make you reconsider how you do the design and maybe use some different high low pass filters or do you like this no if if i remember correctly and this was a show that i did quite a long time ago but if i remember correctly um it was like an a, a sloped audience theater and the subs were really just hitting like the the first couple of lines so I needed to lower the uh, frequency response of the main array as much as I could just to get the low frequency information um, to the back of the, of the auditorium, right? What I appreciate about everything that you're doing here, Alish, is that um, these numbers here, these measurements uh, in this game are not the be-all, end-all of your system optimization. You've got all these other things to consider. So this is really just one more data point for you in your consideration of your optimization. Yeah, sure. Okay. Um, so, so did we win or do we have to do this? <laughs> <laughs> Top score and that's it. We have positive points. So I think you should hit sound check and those will be added to your uh, experience points there. I'm, be, I'm moving towards being the head intern. You're 10, more, you're 10 more experience points closer. No, eight more points closer to head intern. Cool. <laughs> and do you do you get like a like a new Tesla when you get to the head intern position, or what what, what happens? <laughs> like panda panda bears come and massage your back for a week. Um, sure. So currently, you just get a message that says you're a head intern now. Um, but the rankings and the and the experience points will have more implications in the future when there's more features. So the mm -hmm. idea with the points and ranks are that in the future. As you get more higher rank, you'll have access to more features. So we want people to start out in the lowest rank with basically the minimum features and score um, tools and abilities. And then as you play more and get more experience, then that'll unlock new things for you in the game. Pew, 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 pew.